the lag of the recording allows me to get a little room tone though yeah, for those yeah. for those out there wanting to get a little inside the sound industry right and the sound engineering part of it <laughs> you get a little room tone first guys you can use that to edit out the background noise with a noise reduction setting on most of your DAWs, which stands for a digital audio something. Anyway, I almost got it. I just forgot what the W stood for. Oh, Sharon, we this is exciting. I, we had to hit record because we were starting to broach into our subject. We got so excited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so many things, all the things. <laughs> oh, it's been a little while. And, you know, we have uh, we're here. Obviously, we're going to talk about She-Hulk. And uh, it's been a little while since you and I have talked. How have you yeah, been? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's been uh, it's been wacky, and I mean, and and, and it's going to be funny. I think it's one of those almost like the like the summer break is coming to an end because now we're going to be there's all these things. So like we'll talk about black Black Panther in less than two weeks, right? Exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's coming. But, up. But um, yeah. yeah, no, it's been interesting. I was and and the part of the reason why we even had some uh, issues connecting is I was um, speaking at a tech conference in. Uh, Toronto and that was nice because it was one of those yay peopling events and then it was also one of those things because it was so many folks from the different aspects of tech uh, industry cybersecurity, this kind of stuff let's just say that that the the conference hall was filled with I would say consistently a higher than normal statistical average of neurodivergence <laughs> so they've done so, studies about that they've done studies in the tech industry about yeah. that actually yeah oh this Something is it about, and, and, and it was interesting yeah. because using the superhero model that i do which again i will admit like some of them the, the gentleman that introduced me from from orion like basically said as he was introducing me, i think this is the first time i've ever said the word superheroes on stage and it was like don't worry. First time for everything, Dave. It's yeah. okay. Um, and and it was wonderful. There was a great response. There was a lot of aha moments. And now I'm following up with some folks from you know across the country on doing more work with them. But there were a lot of the, oh my God, I I work an entire community of Reed Richards. We're all Reed Richards. We are all so. <laughs> so yeah. So it was it was wonderful to be out there pre preaching the. Um, geek girl gospel of mental health and divergence <laughs> and then came back played catch up on some other stuff here and then headed straight into our local con and did a couple of panels there and um, for that one I, I did cosplay I because I had to bounce between a Ghostbusters outfit and whatever I did a I did Carol Danvers but like Carol Danvers you know baseball hat nine inch nail shirt leather jacket and the wig oh so there you go to yeah. prevent having wig hair did like a I, I call her captain holtzman so it was the <laughs> <laughs> left the carol wig shades and a baseball cap on but then put my flight suit on nice and had an awesome picture with a local bucky so that just made my day <laughs> <laughs> oh that's and, really and cool really awesome variant too and a really awesome uh loki variant so it was like oh. all the nerding so yeah, hey. so that's saying. awesome I, I have always, you know, I, I love to go to those things to witness a lot of cosplay. I am, oh gosh, I am just not as good, even at Halloween, I'm not as good at costumes, picking and doing and all that stuff. So yeah, it's always, I'm always very admirable and I'm like, gee, I should well, learn how to do that. That'd be cool. So no, my mom, <laughs> like basically teaching me to sew at an early age and then getting into things like Rocky Horror and stuff like that, like any opportunity for cosplay is, you know, has always been there. And, you know, my kids fell down that rabbit hole. And frankly, I created monsters in the sense that it was the, um, yeah, their level, their game was always right yeah. up there. So, you know, but when your kid ends up going to what grade one is Wolverine and you're having to make sure that his, his, his little yellow suit, the claws are like not dangerous. But then to watch your granddaughter yeah. wear it to daycare oh, later yeah. is like awesome. So I still have to do like a Wolvie um, X23 like mashup for them, but not just like, not the street clothes version, like running through the woods kind of thing. It's the, I want to do full on, like it's, it, yeah, we're going to go old school. Yeah. Um, yeah. Get the yellow, like get crack the... open the Lycra and then have my son complain about, um, you know, pins and where I'm sticking. <laughs> so yay morph suits. Morph suits have like, you know, um, brought his, his 
sewing associated trauma levels down. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. We're going to, we might, we'll probably mention Wolverine just briefly in this as we're talking mm-hmm. about She-Hulk. <laughs> but, yeah. um, and I uh, just, well, I'll just throw it out there is there was a, the, actually the Easter egg that Wolverine is now maybe part somewhere of the MCU kicking around it. It was just a, a news article on the side mm-hmm. of, of her looking on the internet that said man in bar fight has claws or something. Yeah. And it's like, well, that's got it. I mean, everyone knows. So yeah. the question is that a one-off or uh, is that going to be referenced? Uh, and it sure seems like it, it's one of those fingers. things. That's I'm probably the fact be that she asked the question, you know, yeah. to Kevin was, you know, what was the, the sort of the confirmation. <laughs> when are the F's been coming in? I love the, the little thumbs up to the camera. Like, yeah, guys, we're all in this together. <laughs> yeah. there, Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're all asking, this is the $64,000 question. It's not just you. So. Well, and so, uh, you know, I titled this or I believe I'm going to title this episode like the uh, terrorism of toxicity or something mm-hmm. to do with toxicity, because there, this is fascinating to me, because above all, one of the things I've heard a lot of people say is this is the MCU's like sitcom or some people have called it the superhero Ally McBeal or mm-hmm. whatever. And, and I think that sometimes when people are saying that they're acting like, Oh, it's this silly little show. But the, the really interesting thing is um, they take on a lot of issues with femininity, masculinity, toxic masculinity. And as we're going to get into today, uh, um, as much as people like to label things, Oh, toxic masculinity. Oh, bleh. Most of those people probably haven't made it to this podcast once they read the title. Don't know. However, <laughs> they, they self-selected themselves out. Yay. <laughs> but, you know, and I have met people who are somewhere in the middles mm-hmm. who are kind of like uh, a guy maybe who's and even I met women before who were like, well, what about, you know, strong males? And I say that in a little mocking tone. Sorry about that, um, because it doesn't make as much sense to me personally. But One of the things that I think for those people who are maybe wondering about, do we showcase positive masculinity? Well, yeah, actually, the show does, even for all the accusations people want to throw at it. It gave it gave you alternates. And I think that was the part that I found interesting was um, watching how there was a certain amount of I I would say I would call it cherry picking from Mm -hmm. the folks that, you know, like to throw woke out there as, as a derogatory. (laughs) Like, right, right. Now that it has no meaning. It's like, you just sound like you're worried that the world's going to leave you behind, that you're clutching onto your old values and, you know, and so, no, so it was really interesting because that was exactly it. There was a contrast. And some of these folks that were, again, going down these rabbit holes were, um, and and saying how it was, it was like picking on man. And it was just, and, and, and even that, like you say, the, the use of um, the kinds of phrasing around, oh, it's a sitcom and kind of like writing it off. Like that was the other part too, is like, it was, it was used dismissively as opposed to no, like if you know anything about She-Hulk, I mean, good Lord, all it takes is like, even just, if, if, if you know nothing else, go to the Wikipedia page for God's <laughs> sake, like that in and of itself will give you like the quickie thing where it's the, yeah, this was satire and it was satirizing comics. It was satirizing. And so, you know, so many different things. It was making the social commentary and that's where the fourth wall stuff came in. And again, fourth wall that predates Deadpool. Can we just put that out there once and for all? If you love the Deadpool does it, do not complain that she Hulk did it, is doing it because she did it first. Okay, when the, you know, when the, like, the, just get over yourself. Yeah. Let's just go to some basic historical facts. But yeah, there's that weird dismissive thing. And it was really funny because, I mean, put it this way, my greatest frustration with the show, honestly, was the fact that the episodes were so short. <laughs> the fact that there was clearly the issue of like, you know, Marvel and what they do to their um, visual effects subcontractors being played out but the fact that that got referenced within it was again very she hulk um you know and that was was really it was that there, there just to me there wasn't enough and there wasn't enough fourth wall stuff where they built up to it and you really didn't get to the what i would consider like the true fourth wall stuff until she comes through the, the screen later mm-hmm. 
and you know moves through so the, the talking off to the side I mean it was good and maybe you have to baby step it in so for me it was more just a case of I wanted more mm -hmm. so if my only critique is that I wanted more and I wanted them to <laughs> supersize it and do you know yeah. <laughs> I was you know I don't consider that a bad thing in the sense that they do have a lot of balls that they're juggling them how the MCU has grown and the number of different things now that they are on so many different platforms it's the okay did this take a hit as a result and I hate to say it but I also wonder too as much as they put it out there and they clearly fed into this is the garbage that we've already put up with with Captain America with with Ms. Marvel what's happened you know in terms of how people have literally turned on um Scarlet Witch all these other kinds of things that they knew in a sense they were poking the bear mm -hmm. and so it was like okay let's just let's just see what happens here and, yeah. and maybe you know do a tester size <laughs> I'm gonna so, you know and and I'll uh put this out there right up front i'm going to assume so if anyone's listening if you feel a little tickle uh, or whatever mostly i'm going to assume that we're not really talking when we talk about the the really toxic fans you know unless they're grudge listening which i don't i don't think i you know i don't think i'm enough on the public uh, uh you know <laughs> radar for that enough on the radar yeah. so uh, i don't i don't think i'm going to assume most of you listening out there are not that just so you know if you're listening mm -hmm. and don't feel uh, attacked but but for those that are kind of maybe in the middle where they uh, whatever you have feelings i i hope that you know Sometimes you feel comfortable we don't know too we don't know. but yeah yeah that's exactly it uh, one of the things that is very fascinating is that she hulk and deadpool I think they're the only ones. They're the only ones I know of off the top of my head in, in the Marvel universe, even before the MCU, they're the only characters that know they are in comic books. They know that they're in a story, right? Yeah. Um, and it's interesting to see that kind of awareness. And I, I saw a really, really interesting uh, post in some group I was in after the final episode where someone, uh, I hadn't even read it yet. So it was one of the, or I mean, I hadn't seen the episode yet rather. And so when I read the comment, I saw it was and I was like, oh, look away. Luckily, it wasn't a spoiler, but it said, hey, did She-Hulk just out Deadpool Deadpool? And I was like, all right, I got to <laughs> see this. And then how many of us were faked out when it goes to the the Marvel screen or the Netflix and home screen and everything before she yeah. comes out? I was like, what happened? The TV kicked off for some Come on. dang it. You know, what's going yeah, on yeah, with this? Yeah. Why am I getting my Marvel channels? <laughs> uh, but it was, but again, brilliant. And, 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 and those little things. And even like you say, that little thing about Wolverine and the, you know, is this an aside? Is it a real thing? You know, man in bar, you know, with claws kind of thing. And, and, and I think that that's the other part that a lot of people, again, if you weren't familiar with it, um, it was one of those things, again, I'm going to go down my weird academic path here, but it was intertextual and very postmodern. So it was very intertextual postmodern in the day, like back in the 80s when it came out. And, uh, and then the fact too, that she was like the queen of the guest spots, because as much as there was these different iterations, it was a case of she never got you know, her own stuff with the same kind of regularity and consistency as everyone else. So it was always about integrating her into a storyline. So to have a running storyline about whose show is this anyways, mm -hmm. um, was, was interesting yeah. because again, she was the, you know, the perennial guest. And then also to even things like, um, the, I guess it's the third episode and it was, you know, and you're, you're watching again, these folks, and, and this is where, like you're saying about, you know, who they are as far as toxicity. I think there's a lot of folks where, um, and, and it can even be well-intentioned folks where you don't realize what you've normalized in terms of broader societal tech toxicity or broader values or, or perceptions of within the MCU, for example. And then you say and do things and then go, oh, wait a minute. But it was the, the whole, it was the Megan the Stallion episode. And, you know, what's this with all the guest spots? This is just some sort of fangirl, blah, 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 blah. And then it was like, you know, I just like pulled out my, you know, issue three where it shows her and Spidey hanging upside down. And it, and I think it's something like, you know, you know, welcome to issue three, like the obligatory um, celebrity, <laughs> you know, cameo. I yeah. can't remember. I'm, I'm, I'm misquoting you know her cover line but it was it was exactly that and it's like yeah and they did that you know fine it wasn't spidey but it was megan the stallion again they brought it into the era and what was really interesting too is watching people make comments about 
well, I don't know if this is supposed to be feminist, like why is she twerking? And what's all that about? And then, well, and then you saw a lot of misogynoir about, um, about Megan the Stallion in terms of like, here's a, you know, a black artist and she's twerking. And so it just went down, like it just, it just triggered a whole bunch of other troll behaviors. Um, and so it was interesting because it was one of those things where it's like, yes, it's feminist. It's always been feminist. Yeah. But look at her back in the day. Well, I'm sorry, but if you were reading that and all you saw was a green woman with big boobs and didn't realize that those big boobs and her figure were there in a sense, ironically, um, then I can tell that you weren't reading it for the real reasons, because as you know, as somebody in my late teens, early twenties, that was reading that it was like, yeah, she can be sexy, hot, awesome. And, but entirely in control and shutting down those things. So a lot of these things and clips that people were pointing out and going, well, it wasn't really feminist before. And you see, it's still not feminist now. And da, da, da. And you're like, uh-huh. you have a limited, like, I get what you think you're saying. That was the, <laughs> the phrase but, that I kept using because what she was doing was she was critiquing it as well as saying, you know what? Like being a feminist doesn't mean you have to wear like sackcloth, no makeup. It's mm -hmm. about informed choice. And it's about, you know, are you participating in your own objectification? Or are you taking something on in an empowering way? And that's a you thing. That's really interesting. And and this tells me a little what you're going to answer, I think. But I wanted to get your perspective. Of course, you know, not being not being a woman, I don't have that perspective. I can only listen uh, and kind of try to learn and watch. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of things that I saw. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. That seems very empowering. What's more empowering for a fictional character than to be able to walk into the producer's office and say, hey, you have to listen to me, right? <laughs> so, but I wanted to get your your feedback on that. And, and we can even go not just the show, but back to the comics. And it sounds like this is probably a yes, but do you find She-Hulk to be an empowering character as a woman? Oh my God, yes. I mean, and well, and the fact that she was empowering and, and again, a lot of people have a misunderstanding around feminism in terms of what it is. And they think that it's like, you know, uh, grumpy women that hate men. And it's like, no, 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 no. And, and, and I just put that out there as a qualifier. And this may, again, some folks may go, oh, well, that's why. But I mean, my PhD is in gender and women's studies. <laughs> and I okay. taught this. So, you know, okay, maybe I'm bringing a little bit, you know, again, something to the table that, you know, somebody might roll their eyes or whatever, but it's the, it's this idea that there's a lot of misunderstanding where, and I think it, it even feeds into other stuff when people get into why they get upset about, you know, critical race theory. And what they think is that it's the, they're afraid of it because this is how, you know, dominant society has treated the, this group of people. And oh my God, if feminists or people with critical race theory, you know, coming into critique things are, you know, if the, the pendulum swings, well, then they're going to treat us like crap. And it's like, no, no, no. It's about, these are, these are ways of looking at the world that says nobody gets treated like crap and, and that there are actually downsides for folks. So feminism and, and what She-Hulk embodies literally is this idea that nobody really has to suffer um, that, that, you know, toxic masculinity actually takes its toll, not just on women, but it takes its toll on men because it limits your emotional intelligence, growth, et cetera. It embeds insecurities and other things that ultimately lead to traumatizing behavior, everything from, you know, uh, sports team hazing to other kind, you know, other really sort of toxic jock related or, or other behaviors that pit men against men, um, but it's men on, on, you know, where are you in the food chain? So in other words, if you are a male that is, you know, um, not of the same socioeconomic and, um, uh, you know, classes like an Elon Musk, well, then you're, you're automatically lower on the food chain. And if he treats you like crap, it's about how stuff rolls downhill. And so feminism is about if you're going to work on equity, Start with the 51% of the population that in some way, shape, or form is on the short end of the stick, obviously some more than others. So you recognize your privilege. But if you tackle that 51%, then you can actually solve a lot of the other problems along the way. Mm -hmm. So it's not about, it, it, it's about actually making things better for 
for men too, but it's that idea that you have to check your privilege and check and see where you could, again, where men are participating mm -hmm. in their own oppression. So, and then women buy into it as well. So there were a lot of folks for, again, for whom some people go, well, the fact that she's partially dressed or the fact that she's twerking, that's inherently, you know, objectifying and sexist. And you're like, that's a social value. Some people feel empowered with less clothes on and some people be, feel empowered with more like the, you know, do I want to wear a bikini or a hijab? If I'm wearing it for my own business and not because somebody's making me do it to keep me in my place, I'm wearing it for me and, and it's, therefore it's, that's empowering. It's interesting. As you say that, it reminds me of the scenes in Miss Marvel where her friend uh, uh, asks her at one point, do you mind, do you, is it bother you that I wear the hijab? And, you mm -hmm. know, there's a reference to that. And you can see her when she's trying on her costume and thinking of her mother's concerns, she kind of ties that scarf around her waist. It's a little tight fitting. It's not quite her style. She's making that choice from her and it's from her cultural experience. Right. And, yeah. and, I, and it is presented in a very interesting way to wear I feel like they're not making fun of her choosing the more modest approach. Whereas they're also not making fun of she Hulk for taking like, Hey, look at me in this dress, you know, kind of feeling. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, um, and, and there was a whole thing around Jen and clothing because of the fact, I mean, I still remember, like, you know, Bruce with the, you know, what's your, who's your best friend? You know, what's your best friend? Like, <laughs> Spend. Spandex. Spandex. Like, you know, like this is, you know, <laughs> as a guy that's woken up, you know, with my pants stretched out and basically <laughs> naked as a result, you're going to embrace. You're going to want, fabric. you're going to want so we saw her walking fabric. In, in those boxy suits and people commenting on her clothing. And it's like, she's like right. I'm functional because if I, if I need to Hulk out, I, th this, this suit needs to have enough bulk and enough stretch mm -hmm. that I can wear it both as Jen and as she Hulk. And then again, so, th but that, again, it gave you the social commentary on how women are judged by their clothing coupled with, then it also gave you the plot point to take you to the designer and yes. other things. And, and I love that the fact that they used, um, that they used daredevil for that not just because it was cool having matt murdoch in and, and all that other stuff but people going how come she doesn't have a costume yet like we're at episode of everyone we still understand I'm like did you not watch daredevil it was the whole <laughs> first season before he had a costume like, dude was fighting yeah. in street clothes yeah like, <laughs> yeah he had a bandana on his head all the whole <laughs> first season <laughs> this 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 is the part that was funny too from like a cosplay this weekend thing so that was the okay so fine I'm, I'm doing stuff with my local Ghostbusters group and we've got our booth set up raising money for the, the Children's Hospital Foundation. And then it was like, but I have all these other things that I need to fit in. So I had like my mental health panels and it was like, how do I fit in something there and cosplay? Okay, fine, put the, the Carol Danvers stuff on and then do the Danvers mashup. But then I also had a Halloween party at a friend's place. Okay. And like, I cracked open my Electra outfit from 2007. <laughs> and, and, and so a friend of mine who's, from my Dungeons and Dragons group, because that was who was hosting the party was somebody from the D&D group. But he was like, nice. I'll wear my Daredevil outfit. And and it was funny because it was a first season Daredevil outfit. So it was him like in the, the black pants, the turkey, like the black shirt, the, the piece of fabric, the bamboo sticks. And yeah, but it was, again, it was perfect and completely like screen accurate <laughs> in, <laughs> in its authenticity as street clothes. Well, uh, <laughs> I, one of the things, as you mentioned this, uh, that hits is the message of a double standard. And oh. I thought that that was very effective the way they utilized the She-Hulkness of, oh, you're hired, but you have to be She-Hulk when you're working during working hours, right? Yeah. And then she says, she even says it's at some point, I don't remember the exact line, but I remember it delivered in a way that was very meaningful where she says, wow, I feel like I was, she Hulk was hired, not me, or I'm only hired because mm. I have superpowers. And I'm also a good lawyer for crying out loud, Yeah, you yeah. know, but nobody's really saying that. And then everybody thinks that has nothing to do with my career. Right. Which is incredibly mm. frustrating, but I felt like, well, that is a really good description. Oh, you're just the token woman. Oh, you're just the one who, you know, or you're just got this job because you're a woman. Or I literally saw someone just uh, yesterday on Facebook who said, 
uh, <laughs> who, who made a comment that uh, movies get packed with women because then if if you complain, then uh, they can say you're sexist. And I was like, do you really? So you believe that female driven movies, what they created the whole movie for it, or they only brought them in because, you know, and, and I guess what I'm trying to say is it's like, you know, think it through, you know, if you're trying to think it through a little, because we don't say that, you know, when we're watching something else well, and you with, see, and that's, with Tony Stark, for example. And that was the other part that was interesting, too, because that, that was exactly the kind of stuff that I was seeing coming up in, in you know, some of the, the, the Marvel fan groups that I'm in, where it was it's this weird thing where, you know, there's this, there are. They're just trying to, you know, broaden the tent and, and bring everybody in as this, you know, big money making thing. They want to have as many new people in. And as a result, they're watering down the franchise. And again, it's the uh, mm -hmm, if you like Daredevil, then hold on. She Hulk was there first just because they, you know, introduced, uh, you know, had had film content of Daredevil. Uh, sorry, of, of um, Deadpool first doesn't mean that, it, you know, it wasn't there. And again, that's the other part. So it's the it's this yes they're broadening things out yes it is going to open stuff up but it's not like they manufactured this character last week based Which on is whatever always, and then inserted yeah. it in going we need women it's like the these characters have been around the, the most recent i mean a newly created and it's still got what, like, what close to 10 years old anyways is miss marvel and so it, it's like this is stuff that's been around and that and, was a and, huge. And so we're not, we're not, it's not being watered down. Yes, mm. they are trying, they, they realized again in the same way that women were reading comics, um, <laughs> that women are going to the movies and that maybe, you know, we would like to have some representation. And mm. so it's, it's, it's not negative, but it's really weird because then they also use that as the, oh, I'm not being a misogynist. I'm not being this and that because I'm just like, this is about lack of character development. Oh, it's it's about this plot hole. And you're like, really? Because I'm not claiming, you know, I'm not, I'm not crapping on the MCU, but there have been other little plot holes here, there and whatever mm -hmm. in other movies. And, and, you know, I've never seen you crap on like Thor Dark World. <laughs> Yeah. the way you're yeah. taking a dump on this thing right now yeah so, no not the and, same and again, way I, right you know like it's just it's one of those things where and don't get me wrong i love watching thor dark world but it, when i see it in the body of work um yeah. you know to me it's the one that they mm, maybe tried to either do too much or they didn't do whatever again well it's like it, it's like i say yeah kind of thinking it through enough to say if i'm saying the very predictable thing that people say that it, that sexists say I'm going to get accused of being a sexist, especially if I say it every single time. Same thing with race and all those things. If it's like, oh, you're saying that predictable thing that, oh, I can't remember the actor's name. But once again, yesterday I read about uh, Wonder Man being cast and um, it's, it, you know, and, and a uh, black man playing Wonder Man. Oh, and people are like, oh, no, they changed his race. And I'm like, nobody knows who Wonder Man is. Now, there are some deep dive people who read the comics and, and but they, he's a very obscure character for one thing. And for another thing, who cares anyway? It shouldn't have to be that way in order to just. There's no need for justification, um, and it's not. It's not even a character who no. It's nobody cares about Wonder Man number one, and now they will hopefully when they bring him to the screen and they make him a cool character. But you know those concerns. It's like if you parrot the same exact concerns that people who are accused of that being well, you know, at the very least, you're going to be accused of that because you're saying the things they say. And I feel like one of the things that's a strength of the show that we're talking about is they actually pull the trigger on her acting empowered, speaking her mind, even, and this is where a lot of shows will break down. Um, they even give her autonomy and agency when it comes to her dating, romantic and sex life. Yes. And this double standard that's come in where I'm seeing people being like, whoa, there's all this sex in this Marvel movie. And it's like, you know, oh, we've never, I mean, because people make a big deal, like the scene in the Eternals where they mm -hmm. kiss and then it flashes forward, which by the way, this is pretty much a kiss and then flash forward. If anyone yeah, wants exactly. to it's it always, sound like never, it's really, yeah, it's, it's the lead up and then it's the next morning. Right. Or it's the oh, whatever. they went into the room yeah. together, you know? Yeah. Um, and anyway, so, so, you know, you definitely can't say that it's uh, inappropriate or exploitive that way, in my opinion, but anybody who doesn't say 
Tony Stark and Star Lord, and then says She Hulk when they're accusing of boy too much sexual <laughs> acting out. It's like have you, it's like have you seen Iron Man, the first Iron Man? Yeah, movie? the first Iron the first Man, Guardians, the the first Guardians. You know, even I mean the second Guardian. You know, anything with Star Lord. Yeah, yeah. There's except for Endgame, when which he was barely a character. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. But but, but yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's that double standard <laughs> the of the wait a second, like it was the again, it was the locker room pat on the back while playing. Absolutely, Meanwhile, you're like you realize this is the beginning of their story where they're at their most toxic, right? <laughs> like even this is, uh, this is, even this uh, is them before the growth arc. Yes, yes, exactly. That's that's them, and and we think of where they ended up. Uh, and nobody really well that's tony stark's character well this is she hulk's character and even in guardians 2 at yondu's funeral um you know uh, uh, uh peter is making the comment to say i really admire him he was my real dad uh and also he hooked up with all these hot chicks right and now so if you're not going to have a big issue with that line that's fine but if you are going to have are not going to have an issue with that line and then you're going to complain the thing that hit me was um yeah you know she's dating and she's on like tinder and those things but the interesting thing is with the she hulk uh, uh in the context of the show she's looking for someone to spend time with i mean you might even say looking for a relationship well this is and, and it's that's like the difference that that <laughs> th th what these guys were engaged in were actually unhealthy relationships and flings and whatnot so th these were all things that were so they're getting pats on the back for effectively again really toxic unhealthy behaviors both for themselves and others and, and and again just again in terms of how they are how they view themselves in other words you know i'm gonna basically go through women like kleenex because um if i was to do anything else that would either um either smack of effort or i'm actually so insecure that i couldn't be expected to do that of course i'm not going to say it that way because that would reveal a weakness instead i'm just going to be a womanizer and and so there's there's a whole other thing about a you know a facade and again that toxic masculinity thing of well i better come off as a player and embody the role of a player because it's better than saying that i am emotionally stunted and incapable of a relationship and they may, and again, you might even be gaslighting yourself to feel that you're just, you know, da da da. Nobody can handle me. I, whereas she was actually engaging in healthy things, and then having toxic men come into her life, and yeah, so you see her going through these different things, and there were people making comments about how, you know, I I heard the S word out there. Oh, she's a slut. Blah blah blah. And you're like, no, this is what women go through, where you get you get emotionally, you, you get manipulated and somebody acts like the good guy until, yeah, and then whatever. So to, to, so to actually, and, well, and you see, and that was the other part too, with seeing, having Matt come in was because Matt's had his own issues. Mm -hmm. And this was literally about how, based on the variety of insecurities and other different things going on in their lives, they ended up engaging in relationships that, again, in her case, she's trying to find somebody but keeps, you know, getting sucked in by these toxic folks regardless of whose face she's putting on the profile and then with him it was the same thing where he's yeah. processing so much he wasn't capable of of relationships and and getting kind of getting into them for the wrong reasons and they literally never found e their equals before yeah and then there they were in the courtroom <laughs> and and they literally you know sparks flew on a number of levels and they found their equals and then later when it's her client you know, and that whole thing, again, they find their, their, themselves as equals on another front. So the, the two of them together, like, make so much sense. And the fact that they had him doing the walk of shame and then showing up to the barbecue <laughs> was just, I mean. Carrying was, his shoes. I love that. Yeah. And, yeah. and the barbecue so, to me, there's, there's two things that are interesting there. Now, I'm not going to say... I, I don't want to say it has to be this way, but I thought the interesting thing when people want to throw around, oh, she's a slut because she had sex or whatever, you know, multiple dates with what's his name for one thing. Now, I'm not yeah. once again, I'm not saying everybody has to do whatever. Um, and then once again, yeah. Oh, was that there was a genuine we enjoy each other with Matt Murdock and he comes to the barbecue, meaning well, let's see what happens. There's some kind of let's see what happens. Enjoying each yeah. other. Certainly not just a sexual contact. Right um it it's something where yeah you can see this like kind of kind of match between them 
the other thing, which I thought was a strength that existed also in Captain Marvel um, and existed in this, at least through those interactions with Daredevil and the same with uh, Carol Danvers and Nick Fury is I never got a whiff of either of them feeling insecure or less than the other person. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so for, you know, and, and with Daredevil and She-Hulk, there's a little back and forth of like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to do my famous hallway fight with these dudes. And she's like, nah, I just smashed him. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm a Hulk, so you got a Hulk with you, dude. And then, but then his reaction is just kind of like, ah, you know, there's a frustration, but there's a teasing factor to it. And mm, he's not like I've had this a little bit yeah. longer, but it's not condescending. It's more just like, I get your enthusiasm. Mm. I've been there. Let's just see how it all plays out. And then you see how it plays out. It's like, you know, it is a little from column A, a little from column B. Like, you know, she saved and him. What was it? 40 minutes or something. Yeah. At the it, same time, you know, <laughs> the realtor's going to have a hard time putting that, that building back on the market. <laughs> um, yeah. You know? Nobody ever, they didn't charge her for any of that, but um, yet I will see if there's a season two. And if they do, I, think that uh and the even the fact that um charlie cox uh you know playing matt murdoch walking doing the like you say the the traditional walk of shame carrying his shoes that is traditionally a shot on a female character who always is the one leaving the scene and yeah. everyone's like oh and for him to do that past that moment now he didn't show any sign of shame uh, but no, no, but it was just the idea that yeah, like here it is. And here's, and it's full and daredevil. I walk costume. down the street in my costume, and yeah, right. I, my 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 shoes might not be comfortable, but damn, I'm putting the mask on so that nobody knows who I am. Right. And, and well, and the fact that then Nikki points it out, like there's some guy, and you know, so it's not just the the once off shot. There's like the and that the reminder, you know, like it's it's called out for what it is, yeah. just in case anybody's wondering. But yeah, exactly. It's 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 not the the woman leaving the guy's place. Um, so they flipped a lot of those things on, on, on their head. Yeah. And, and it was great. And the fact that he was, you know, he did that and there was like no harm, no foul. It wasn't like he never saw her again <laughs> or whatever else. Like it was just, it was, I think there were so many things that were done maturely here, but again, it's this, Oh, well, it's a comedy and Oh, well, it's this and Oh, well, it's that. And so there's still these things that get labeled and and the labels taken with a certain value like i love the fact that it was you know clearly labeled as a comedy um and and and, and a lot of was it? i think they call it like a courtroom or a lawyer drama type, whatever it, and again the ally mcgill references because again those things were th those there's this weird thing where it's like apparently on one level you can't make social commentary in these particular <laughs> forums and yet we know that how much good social commentary comes out of everything from a stand up routine, a Simpsons episode, a something like comedy is often used as the vehicle because the people, it allows somebody to make the poke yeah. and do the thing where you're not like, again, where you can laugh about it and do the, oh, aha. I mean, good Lord, George Carlin as, as somebody from back in the day that I think of in my childhood that, you know, the, the amount of social commentary that oh. he made unabashed and, and unapologetic and not even hidden. I think if people want to say comedy does not do that, then one of the problems is they're trying to have it. <laughs> well, also, yeah. And also they're trying to have it both ways because mm -hmm. most of the people who are going to endorse that are also going to say it's a comedian's job to disrupt the system. If the comedian is making jokes that are in the vein that they enjoy. Yeah. If, they're if they're busting on trans people or they're, you know, doing those things and people are quick to say, well, they're comedians, they're supposed to shake it up. And then it's like, well, this comedy needs to stop preaching to me. It's like, mm -hmm. well, dude, you know, come let's, and I say, dude, in a meaningful way anyway, but one of the things that, um, well, let's get into this now, since we're talking about Matt Murdoch and I think he'd be on this list. Uh, there are, as I said, there are some strong male characters and mm -hmm. you know how, how you and I are always hashtagging, not all men. No, yeah. just kidding. Um, yeah. That's usually that's usually <laughs> thought of as a rather toxic hashtag. Uh, oh God, uh, yeah. <laughs> toxic hashtag might be redundant now for Twitter. Whoa, we'll see. That's that's ripped from the headlines. But you know they have these examples of good male characters. They're not, and and they don't have to be perfect to be non toxic. I mean, for example, well, and in some cases, it's the it's the wake up call to the yeah. fact that they may be carrying some toxicity like that's that's actually where um, it, it's not just about being Mr. Rogers, Steve, or like, you know, neighborhood sweater guy. <laughs> Either um, one. 
They were usually but, seen together. Most yeah, of the time. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, I still love, I don't know if you've seen the meme about, again, in terms of multiverses and timelines where that's exactly what he did was he oh, went back, oh. and, you know, uh, <laughs> it's not just about him and Peggy or, or is that really Peggy? Is does it, older, know? does older Fred Rogers kind of look like older Steve, Steve Rogers? Ro- yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, but, but seeing like, I mean, even seeing like, like pug was a good example and again, excellent pug wasn't perfect. Yeah. But the fact that, but you saw that there was progress because when he's got to go in there with the earpiece <laughs> and, and, and like be prompted by Nikki to say the right things, because, you know, the invitation said, bro, uh Oh, Oh crap. got to send a guy. And, like, and he, the and best it was exchange. one of those things where he's like, On Oh, that, Hey, I don't know how to be a dick. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know? Well, and the, the best, the best exchange as part of that was when she's telling him, now make sure whenever you mention women, you say the word female. And he just his his visceral revulsion when he was just like, "Oh, please don't make me do this." And yeah. she's like, "No." And and also the fact that he was standing up for you know different causes of their own, and he's able to identify with that one partner. I, I don't remember his name from the DA's office that was like totally a, just oh, a jerk. Yeah, and um, he's like, "I don't have any use for that guy or for really any of these guys." I'm mm-hmm. not threatened by the strong women in my life. I'm not needing to compensate. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, even um, this is, this is goes in the line of the non-perfect thing. Even uh, cousin Larry, who was her dad. Um, <laughs> he, oh my God. He was such an awesome dad. Yes. Yeah. Like it was just like, again, but in that weird kind of like, he didn't quite realize how some of the stuff was like literally to dad and, 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 but it was the, it was coming from the good place of, protecting his daughter so it's like mm-hmm. you can move home and you know. yeah, exactly is it infantilizing well yeah but it's a parent infantil and so uh yes it is something maybe not perfect but it's the kind of thing that uh, that wow. people would do for their kid he he was awesome and well and i think another good example of that sort of that good man thing came right in the very first episode with bruce and that whole thing where um you know it's the okay so i got to teach you how to help and of course, he's got the binder. Oh my god! We <laughs> were, you know, and he's got it all mapped out. And and then the idea about the controlling the anger and all these kinds of things. And and it's like she's like, no, 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 I do this already. And again, a lot of folks, God, that was like the first thing that triggered stuff. Oh, so she just thinks she's a better Hulk, and she's rattling off all these things. And then they started dragging in stuff that's from that's never been addressed in the MCU in terms of his own origin and his family and trauma and whatnot. And, and oh, that's the same as the fact that she deals with this. And it's like, oh, and I love you don't yeah. understand the notion of microaggressions and complex yeah. PTSD and and uh, and all these other things. So you're you're trying to play the pain Olympics right now, as opposed to this is the aha moment where I swear every woman at some point went, yep, that's just a Tuesday. You know um, what, what <laughs> hit me about that, that? That was very interesting was I felt like in the previews, I, I didn't love the previews for this show, to be honest, No, no, uh, especially the first ones. They didn't, they didn't do enough or I don't know what they were using or extra, whatever, extra footage, something. Well, yeah. And to me, all it looked like was her trying her in a dress and went, people saying, Hey, look at that ass or whatever. And it was like, okay, I don't know about that. And that aspect of she Hulk was, it was like, if that's the only thing they're doing, but the interesting thing about that bit where she says, I'm used to controlling emotion. I'm a woman in the trailer hit me as a joke. Like she was saying like, you know, women would be crazy. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. But when I see it in the context of the episode, I was like, that's a fascinating thing. And probably one of those things that, like you said, women are like, yep, thank you. And men are probably like, oh, I mean, maybe I knew that. Maybe I didn't know that. But there's a, it's an interesting way. And this is one of the things I think comedy also allows us because mm-hmm. we're our guard is down. We're relaxed. We're laughing and we can listen. You know, mm-hmm. this is and- my big argument with people about Jojo Rabbit, by the way, people were like, oh, you shouldn't make fun of Nazis. It's like, well, I mean, yeah, make fun of Nazis, but, but again, but when the don't Jews make it lighthearted and, and making like, the joke about it. That's like, right. that's different. Like, that's you know, different. Can, right. You know, and people it's forget useful. That Nikki also yeah. has Cohen in his last name. And so and I, he is coming at it <laughs> from like, he, you know, he, he yeah. chooses to use one last name rather than the other, but he's a Cohen as well. So, you know, like if, if he's making that joke, that's a little different because it's actually coming from that insightful place 
and, 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 and the absurdity. And so this it, was exactly it was yeah. that what she did was, and, and again, goes to this, like, bruise is not toxic, but he's also a man that can grow. And what he, it's the, here, I'm trying to help my cousin. And oh God, she's just pointed out that I'm mansplaining. <laughs> oh, right. And boy. that's uncomfortable. That's right? not my, you know, and that's, I think the other part that it wasn't tearing down Bruce. It wasn't picking on Bruce. It was that thing where it's like, you know, it, it, as with all allies in any way, shape or form, um, that room for growth and recognizing. So, so yes, he's the superhero. Yes, he's this, he's got this experience, but he's also a guy. So when his cousin becomes a Hulk too, for all the lived experience he's gotten that, he doesn't have the lived experience of being a woman. So therefore he doesn't know what other stuff she's carrying around. And that in a sense makes her already you know, have to do that because you do have to do that. That's everything from, again, the various microaggressions that you can literally be dealing with from the moment you wake up, you know, where suddenly you're the, like, again, everybody gets up and starts getting ready for school and work. You know, you're supposed to remember where absolutely everything is. You know, it's the mom, where did I leave this mom? Like, why am I the memory bank and the inventory uh, holder for everything in the house, especially when I wasn't the last person to touch and or see this. So I've got to do the extra things here, or I've got to do the preemptive stuff. Then it's the, again, the getting to work and you get there and so-and-so makes this comment or somebody makes a comment about, gee, your hair looks a little different or a little whatever, or, you know, are you tired or, you know, some, again, some kind of weird comment about, you know, what you're wearing or again, these other weird little things that they're just sadly this normal part of your day, or you're going to get coffee and like the weirdo behind you, the, the, you know, make, and you're just, you got to brush them off because, or, or say a thing. And in a sense, act passively or act politely because it's the, I need to defuse and get out mm -hmm. because if I do this other thing, and, 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 and handle this, maybe well, why didn't you just blah, blah, blah. You know, the guys are like, you know, I, well, like, first of all, he's not going to say that to you. Second of all, even if you did, and you did that, well, then you're a guy standing up doing whatever. I'm suddenly the bitch and I've just thrown gas on the fire. So like, yeah. So it was one of those things where when you look at who Bruce Banner is and how otherwise emotionally intelligent he is, especially since having gone and, and that's the other part too. He's always been emotionally intelligent, even when he was in his worst Hulk days. But it was the fact that, and, and what he didn't like was the fact that a switch flipped and he would lose all of that. So that was where the loss was, was that the, I'm, I'm devolving and I don't like who this other guy is. And so like, that was his struggle where she's like, no, 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 I gotta, I, I gotta, I gotta do this two-step all the time. So in some respects, it reflects back to his earlier line where he says, I'm always angry. Mm -hmm. Like it, mm -hmm. it, it was actually a nod. Oh, to, you know, interesting. I didn't catch it. Yeah. First or second movie. And it was like, you know, it was about like, I'm always angry. Well, she's like, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm always on. So as a woman, that was brilliant, but it, it did that thing where you're like, he's the nice guy and it was the same yeah. thing with like abomination too like in terms of nice guys like honestly like abomination you find out in some respects is a nice guy long there's a whole other like you know <laughs> absolutely we yeah we, we, we need longers with his own show uh <laughs> and you know what happened um and emil emil i think abomination He's a uh, very, he's an interesting case before going to him. I wanted to mention though, I think the best example of non-toxic positive masculinity, which is the therapy group. And, and you've got all these like B and C, probably C and D level, actually uh, Marvel villains who yeah. are having this like changing experience. And one of the things there is, is first of all, they did what Bruce learned to do, which mm -hmm. is they immediately, they listened. Right. It's like you can say all the things and yeah, Bruce is trying to help, but he didn't listen. And yeah. so they offer this listening and you even have I, very interesting, even though they bury it in a joke. Someone's like, yeah, let's go kill him. And it's like they're all supervillains. Right. So no big deal. Let's yeah, just so find him and kill him. <laughs> and then one of them, uh, gosh, I can't even remember which one uh, chimes in to say, hey, guys, can we offer uh, her something more than just violence like oh we love to kill him and isn't that just a male reaction someone hurt you you tell me yeah. his name where yeah. does he live 
And it's like, oh, well, actually, I just need some somebody to like listen and comfort me. And I mean, I'm a whole human being adult in my own right. If and by the way, I'm a Hulk. If he needs killing. No, she didn't say that, but <laughs> if she, she's yeah, up yeah. to the task. I, you don't, I, I don't you don't need to defend me. I can physically do whatever needs to be done. <laughs> exactly. Right. And but then to have one of them point out, hey, guys, this is well intentioned, mm-hmm. but it's it's off the mark. And to and, me, and what any of it won't do any of us any yeah. good. It's, it's, it's the stepping back. Well, and that was the whole other part too. the fact that he came to this. And at first you see it being played in a jokey kind of way. And like, it's the almost like it's the, I mean, especially the fact that it's the over the top, he's got all these, you know, again, and it plays <laughs> hippie, into the whole his cult. hippie harem or whatever. Yeah. And the whatever. So there's definitely, you know, um, it, it is sort of poking fun at a certain thing, but at the same time, yeah, like this is the first group of people in some respects that again, despite the chaos that gets introduced into her life, it's like, oh, here's a, the proverbial safe space. Like it's this little peer led group. And that was the other part. So that you're like, OK, so there's this whole world of superheroes um, that, you know, in a sense, yes, they've worked through, it, but they don't sit down and have this kind of a conversation where, like you say, it's that that C and D tier that mm-hmm. find themselves, you know, sitting in this place. And then the flip of it being the place where Todd has the event and Emil's just like, Hey, you know what? I'm just trying to do speaking gigs to pay the bills, man. Like I just got to do what I got to do. And da, 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 da. I'm like, Oh, you mean it's this hold on. These are the, like that. But again, that thing where from the nice guy perspective, it's that whole thing where somebody says, well, why are you friends with so-and-so or why did I whatever? And it's like, well, that's just my buddy from like my, you know, my hockey team or whatever. And you're like, yeah, but, and so he had that same realization where it's like his Venn diagram of, of friends that he thought or associates or whatever it was, you know, literally loop back into something toxic. And that's not where he wanted to be, but he didn't know Mm -hmm. until it was pointed out to him. It's like, I was just doing a thing and I was just whatever. And hey, it's a, it's a speaking gig. Oh, it's a speaking gig for who? <laughs> oh, well, and that was my cool. thought. This goes against my values. I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to know what you thought like about, about that character. Cause at first I was like, oh, he's the ringleader. And then it's like, what you were meant to think, I think. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, oh no, he's just speaking. And then it's like, yeah, but he's, as you put it kind of by speaking, he's perpetuating the problem. Well, right. And, and again, he was coming at it a particular way. And, and, and I could say like there, you know, one, one thing the pandemic did save me from was that I got booked into a gig that huh. seemed a particular way <laughs> and that who I would be speaking with and blah, 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 seemed fine. And then it was as the pandemic kicked in and some of these folks that I was going to be sharing the stage with were suddenly talking about 5G and you know, some other stuff. And you're like, oh. Um, I get it. You believe in, in, in certain things related to neuroscience that we share values in, but then there's other parts of science that you kind of, you know, self-select yourself out of. And I have a problem with that. So I, I kind of see it that same way where it was like the, he, he knew a certain amount about the gig, but not enough. And that, and then exactly caught himself with the, oh my God, I'm actually perpetuating a thing that I don't believe it's, in. And so again, how often do you walk into something? Oh, well, my friend, so-and-so, you know, I, 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 my son had a, a funny thing happen where a buddy of his from the, that they used to work together. And it was like, yeah, I got this email for this thing and there's going to be free pizza. And what they found out was they'd ended up at the local headquarters of a provincial political party and that, yeah, there was pizza there, but they were supposed to be making <laughs> phone calls on behalf of this political oh, no. party to earn their pizza. And it was just like the <laughs> awkward. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I had an experience a while back. It was very interesting. And, and this is what I, I like to throw this out there because I know people and I've met people who even some well-intentioned people that are like, well, you know, what about like, a, you know, these men's groups and some of them are like men's rights and be a strong man and be a king and all that kind of stuff. And um, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say that all, I haven't been to all the groups in the world, right? Mm-hmm. I will say, however, this is the example of what I've usually experienced as a man when their guard is down, other men say things, right? Um, but I had an experience once I found a group on Facebook that was all about male sexual abuse survivors. And so I decided I, I was very interested in that. And I was like, and particularly for this show, 
I, and I mm-hmm. reached out to the guy uh, who was in charge of it. And I said, I'd love to talk to you and maybe even talk to you about being on this podcast because this is a very underappreciated problem. It's not talked about enough. Men mm-hmm. don't talk about it enough, uh, especially in their own experiences, that kind of thing. Uh, also very underreported because of shame and masculinity. Yeah. Once well, again, and again and that's toxic masculinity. masculinity and <laughs> yeah. patriarchy do is yeah. they shame men for this stuff. And, and the, the interesting thing was it was a great response at first, but then as we traded messages back and forth, um, it wasn't very long. It wasn't very many exchanges before he started talking about how this is perpetuated by women and women are the ones who block us from being able to report and, you know, modern women and feminism and all this has been such a blight and it's oh. made it so, you know, and all of a sudden he went there and that's the problem is when I've approached a lot of groups that say they focus on men's mental health or anything else about masculinity, some of them are really, you know, I'm sure once again, there's some, and I have some friends that are part of some groups that, but, but the interesting thing is the groups address toxic masculinity. They talk about being male. That's, that's kind of, that could go in a healthy direction. If they're talking about women did this to us and we by the way women it's suck result of feminism and it's like where did the anger have to come in if we're talking about you know healing from abuse um you know, why does it have to be why do we have to be angry at women also and why does that have to rear its head within the first conversation that we had at which was i was grateful because then i didn't spend time recording <laughs> Uh, which Thank I would not have selecting yourself out, you know, yeah. I wouldn't have felt comfortable putting that out there, you know, um, cause I feel like also it's not true. Mm-hmm. I mean, putting it, I'm going to compare something really serious to something that, well, it's serious to those who work in the industry and those of us who are fans, but either way, people say, if people want to say, Oh, well, women abuse, abuse boys and men, it's like, that's not that that's never happened. But statistically speaking, the vast majority of abusers are men. We all know that. Um, mm-hmm. and, and then and on the other hand, men are abused like, by other men than they are by women. Exactly. And the other thing that this won't sound near as serious is the same thing in the Marvel. You step into the Marvel comic superhero world and I hear people say they just repeat it. And it's an easy Google to prove wrong. They say it's all, all the wokeness is really destroying the comics industry. You know, nobody's buying comics anymore. And it's like, they have never sold more comics than yeah. they have. There was a 20, it was like you a 20 going down and that Marvel's down yeah. to the last two pennies. Last year was, yeah, exactly. Last, last year, I read this recently that last year there was a jump of like 20 or 25% or is that, yeah, it was two years ago. There was that. And then last year it was a jump of 50% on top of that or something huge. Yeah, where yeah, some kind of, of crazy, stupid number where it's like again, yeah, nobody's nobody's sitting there, um, like you know, starving kind of thing in the Marvel head office. And that's the thing that I think people forget is it's easy to we focus on the toxicity of it all, but then also I I like to look at the other side to say when I see a toxic comment now on social media, I see a lot more people standing up against it than I ever used to. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned, you know, Miss Marvel 10 years ago, right. It's not, it's like a decade old of her, her lore and everything, but it was an, it was a a phenomenal seller and became almost an instant classic comic work. As soon as the comics, the issues came out and they were bundled into the, the book that, you know, they usually do. And even before then people were appreciating it and saying, Oh, this is huge. Mm -hmm. So it was filling a need. Yeah. It was, there was, there was clearly an audience. No, uh, well, and, and that's the part that I find funny is when there are these kind of things where people will um, either cherry pick or cherry pick and misrepresent something because it goes against their perception of the fandom because there's this weird like fear of how the fandom might grow. And I think, like I said, the part that, that got me with a lot of these groups and mentioned this to you before, which is why we had to like press record the part of this rabbit <laughs> hole was you know, you're in this fan group and they're talking and you're just, and you're watching the stuff and especially considering the fact that She-Hulk took this on. Like it's the, we've dealt with all of this stuff and She-Hulk's going to do what she's always done, but we're also going to, in, in terms of that modernizing in the same way we're bringing in Megan the Stallion for the third episode, instead of it being Spidey for the third issue um, as your, your celebrity thing, it, you know, and, and, and dealing with the social media stuff. So it did that stuff and, and it called it out and it called out the Tinder stuff and all these other. So it, it, it went and modernized that way. 
And then you watched basically the folks who were contributing to this stuff get triggered and just like, it was like a textbook. And, and I know I'm this, but da, 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 and you were, and it was this bizarre thing where you're like, dude, like just stop now because you've moved clearly from one steps, one through four, like clockwork and, 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 and just different things where it was, it was everything from the redirects, the whatever. And it was, it was interesting because you would watch folks step up. And what was really nice was that it's one thing and, and, and because you would have these comments and, and if as a woman, you stepped up and said something, you would just, the, the doubling down was ridiculous. A guy would say something. And unless there were other women to pick on, they might get attacked. Um, especially if this is somebody that, that, you know, two people have an ongoing, whatever. Um, but for the most part, they could say something and they would get ignored if there was a woman to pick on instead. And then women, and so, so you, you had women watching each other's back and making certain kinds of comments, but you did have more men stepping in. And then you just had a lot of times as this was going further and further, where it was just like, you know, somebody's toxic post would go up and it's like, you know, somebody, some guy going, really, could we just like, could you just stop this? Mm -hmm. Or gee, where's the admit, you know, is the admin not paying attention? Like what's the deal? Um, and even some folks that started like a parallel, they, they literally posted and said, really tired of the toxicity over here. Yeah. And they call and then and they actually said like not so, something to the effect of like uh Marvel non-toxic fandom group. Um, <laughs> because we just we want to celebrate things and you know, and we're not above critiquing things if we think that there's a plot hole or a you know questioning something or could they have done it, but we're not we're not going into this garbage anymore. It's... So it was nice to see more guys stepping up and, and and frankly saying things like, you know, like really how insecure are you? Like really did it, could you, and, and when, when it's nice when a, you know, you're looking at somebody's profile and going, oh, look at it. It's a 45 year old man going really dude, <laughs> you're going to mansplain that to, a, you're going to, you're going to mansplain <laughs> feminism to a woman. Okay. You know, in the meantime, I yeah. had folks on that very same thread, try to dox me and, and pull out whom, oh, how oh. dare you make comments like this because you work in mental health. And then they're putting up my profile picture and putting up other things. And it was like, again, right. could double down on the toxicity. So it was, I think it was really bold for doing that and calling it out because I think Marvel hasn't really been able to do that as an entity. So I think that was the other part that was interesting was very much in that She-Hulk way of I am aware that I am, you know, in this case, in a show or I, I am in a comic um, and this is the world that I operate in. And so therefore I can make this social commentary. I can say and do things that the other shows can't. And so they did that. They went there, but they not only went there on the toxic fans, they also went there on Kevin with like the whole Really? The CGI? Really? Okay, so I have to do this off screen. Okay, so I so I need to be <laughs> what's the best way to handle this? Should I do it off screen? Of the budget and and then yeah. and then asking the questions about the X-Men, whatever. So there was no um issue around that, or even the fact that when you think about how She Hulk's history is grounded in litigation issues, the fact that some of the various the first thing was like people are like, well, what's the whole thing with Titania? And da 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 da. And you're like, do you not realize like if, if they're going to have a lawyer show, <laughs> the idea of, first of all, a lawsuit around copyright as it relates to She-Hulk, but then the fact that Disney is known for being one of the most litigious entities yes. regarding copyright, <laughs> like this is like, <laughs> are you paying attention or, you know, or is this over your head? Like what, like it's the no, 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 no. like this is all the stuff like this. And I'm just sad that I'm only getting 22 minutes of it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I, it's no, it's a fascinating thing to look at the way, once again, they're able to work things in, you know, when that's happening. And I also, I always like to point out <laughs> to people, this is a lesson I've had to learn as a white, straight, cis dude. I think it hit all the things that I am. <laughs> um <laughs> but I'm so much more. No, but that's it. As, as that guy, that person who inhabits that space in life, um, I had to learn this. 
which is that, um, oops, hang on, I derailed my own train of thought. Oh my gosh, hold on one second. No worries. I looked down at my notes and it threw me off. So, <laughs> oh man, what was I going to say? I have done that more than once. Yeah. Yeah. Um, gosh, where were we? You were just talking okay, so about. We were, well, we were talking about everything from the litigious stuff to the calling out of the trolls and the, um, uh, and calling out. Yeah. Of oh, the that's it. Comments, that's it. Got that it. She got she got thrown out of the it. bus on the CGI train. Yes. Okay. Sorry, mix my metaphors right. there. My apologies. No, no, no. You're you're really good. Um, okay. So there. So one of the things that I've had to learn <laughs> is uh, when you see something depicted in fiction like this, whether it's racism or sexism, and especially if it is created by people or a, a creative team who understands what that is and comes from that perspective, there are times where it's tempting to say. Well, this seems a little heavy handed. And I heard people say that about not Pug. I, here's the problem, by the way, Pug and the guy who was the toxic dude from the Diaz office. Oh, they, Todd, the actors yes, look, hey, nothing against anybody getting a check. I don't want to I don't want to recast anybody, but uh, they both look too much alike. Uh, I could, couldn't tell the difference between them sometimes. But <laughs> when people people were saying like, oh, that dude's way over the top. Right. And the thing is, uh, mostly men. I felt like said that and, and not not maliciously. Most of them, mm -hmm. this is I'm talking people who are the 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 woke libs of us or whatever, also, you know, but again, it, these, I mean, these are again, like everything else. It's there's a little element of caricature. Yeah. I mean, you're live. This is a superhero world, right? Everything well, is just I, up a notch. Yeah, right? but I, I have found the thing I learned is I just assume it's not now when I when I hear things. And I read a, a book called The City We Became. It's a part of a trilogy. That's, it's going to be part of a trilogy. The second one just came out this week. Anyway, um, and it called Jennings, I think. But it has a lot of stories about sexism and racism in it because all the characters are very diverse. It has to do with the soul of New York City and all this. And it's very, very good. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, but it, it has, you know, tale after tale of kind of misogyny and racism. And the thing is, I actually felt that way as I started reading it. I was on and I was like, gee, this seems like over the top. I mean, just people, well, come on now. But one of the scenes is a, a woman in a park confronting a black man and say to one of the characters and saying, I'm calling the police and they're going to come here and shoot you. And then months later, that happened for real and was in the news, you know, and when it happened, mm -hmm. um, you know, it was like, oh, that was not that was I mean, because you hear that, I think, as a person with some white privilege, you hear that and you think like, geez, but that really is that really like, that was pretty. Uh, that woman seems pretty crazy. And it's like, yeah, well, if it's crazy, it's uh, it's crazy IRL because it's happening. Yeah, it's well, and that's actually the whole happening is stranger than fiction in some respects. And that's where I loved you know, as you watch this story go to a certain point and you think it's all going to be good, then it goes off the rails. And then again, where she just breaks the fourth wall and again, you know, calls the writers on stuff, then goes to talk to Kevin complete with baseball cap and, 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 you know, and then says like, look at really like, are we going to go down the hole? He gets superpowers. Like Todd's Todd's villainy has <laughs> nothing to do with that. It's like he's toxic, yes. like that's villainous enough. Like the, and and that idea that again, oh man when he like injected himself with the blood because <laughs> it was that calling yeah. the uh, calling all this stuff out and 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 like you say there's that thing where in the same way that you would say well isn't this a little over the top she was doing that based on the on one level yes this is over the top but at the same time like I said from a you know 55 years on the planet as a woman. Um, the only again, the only thing that's really different in the show is the fact that, yes, there are superheroes, green people, you know, super, superpowers, that kind of right. thing. But the behaviors are <laughs> that's really a great there. Point. And that's... there are far more Todd's walking the planet. And yeah, the, the dude is a toxic villain. There, there's plenty of those toxic villains out there. The last thing they need is, you know, gamma radiation enhancement. The... Because when you think about the fact that she was 
to, to get that, first of all, there's that whole network that they've set up. The fact that it, it was so infiltrated to be able to, again, have somebody go and data on an app, do this, do that, gaslight her into believing, all these other kinds of things to then turn around and again, dox her, do all this other stuff. Like, again, that is not unusual. Like, the, like, you know, revenge porn exists. All of these other things exist. And they exist in these weird life altering ways. And the only thing that was different was that Jen was able to break the fourth wall. And in a sense, yes, she's calling out heaven and this constructed universe and blah, 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 blah. But that's in a sense also calling out. So, so, so there's the MCU like call out in terms of like the CGI and when are we, you know, certain kinds of things there and, and fight scenes and daddy issues. And that's a whole other rabbit hole to go down. Um, but, you know, put a pin in that one, but then also at the same time, this idea of no, the number of times as a woman, you just want to be able to say to society, like, just like, hold on, stop. This is flipping ridiculous. And, and I, I don't know how many folks, is, you know, are familiar with um, Cassandra from Greek mythology. So she's the one that was, um, you know, given the, the, the uh, ability to 100% uh, accurate prophecies, but the curse is that she will never be believed. So it's, and it relates to the Trojan War. So here's this poor woman. We're like, don't do the thing. Oh, there she is going off again. And then the thing happens. And gee, how did we all get here? And Cassandra's like pulling her hair out going like, <laughs> I warned you like 57 times. Yeah. <laughs> and so there's been tons of stuff here. We just had a recent election. So we had, so we had She-Hulk coming out. We had a civic election here where we watched a former mayor who was not only toxic in his time in office, but left halfway through a term and then allegate, not even allegations, like this was stuff that when it came out in the media, you're like, you know, this wasn't some sort of little once off thing like this thing, this story. First of all, you were scrolling and you're just like, holy crap, did they put war and peace on like my, you know, this one <laughs> article and oh my God, like how much, how much time did legal have to take a look at this? So it wasn't thrown out there, you know, um, in, in kind of any kind of spurious fashion. But you watch people double down and and back this person. And, and I remember, and, and the part for me is as somebody that has survived um, both domestic violence, but also narcissistic abuse and physical abuse from my father, as well as other people. And, it, and, and some of these people who are now backing this abuser are the people that you know were, were like by my side and you know, do I need to do a thing? Do you have a lawyer? And it was this. And I remember making a post that basically said, like, what is it that those of us as survivors have to do to get our supposed allies, supporters da, 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 to stop supporting other abusers? Like, just because this person didn't abuse me doesn't mean that they're OK. <laughs> and that, you know, and so it was that weird thing. So to, so to see Jen do that and be able to alter the storyline, you're like, Oh my God, like that's, that's the fantasy. That's the thing because you get so tired of beating your head into a wall. And, and I mean, and again, I had somebody basically go rant and try to dox me and throw stuff into like, my, not just my DMs, but other friends. So like that stuff is out there. And they also allege to be, you know, this type of person and that type of a person. And it's like, well, you know what, if you can't put your profile and a real name on there. I don't know yeah. who you are, but I'm not listening to you. But so, so this, so what Jen is describing is not like, it, it's not as over the top as some of us would like to, you know, believe it is. I, I, I wish it was somebody, you know, putting something on steroids as opposed to reality. Oh man. Yeah. And that's the thing. Yeah. That's totally, totally true as you, when, and when you can choose to turn it off and ignore it and not have it be a thing. Um, man, when you have that, that, well, I mean, privilege is what privilege is, right? And yeah. so somebody uh -huh. who's like, oh, I'm white, so I don't have to pay attention to racism if I don't want to. <sighs> I'm a man. I don't really have to pay that much attention to sexism unless I want, unless I choose to. Um, and then it, so with that option, oftentimes, unfortunately, comes the denial and the, the chance to say, well, I feel better living in a world where that, quote, doesn't happen. So therefore, I'm going to pretend I'm in that world. And, mm -hmm. and anymore, I think with things coming out, um, I, 
I believe that there's at least a few more people that are hearing the stories from people when they come out and are listening and that go, yeah, okay. You know what? That's a good point. At least with yeah. younger people, I see that a lot. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that was, and that was one of the things here was to see the generational divide and that the number of folks that were um, again, younger going, I don't know who he, you know, okay. Yeah. I recognize this name from, you know, back at you know, or, or I don't recognize it. But if I have any recognition, it's more of the like that historical, you know, learned it in the civics class kind of thing. But once that story came out, I was like, the whoa. Um, and, and yeah, so there's that that whole thing about what you can what some people can get away with. So that's what I, I actually loved about her doing that was it, it, it was, again, as she was calling out all of these other things and dealing with these things that so many of us, again, deal with just without you know, all, all the other gamma, you know, radiation related uh, <laughs> things that make it, you know, the fiction that it is. Um, it was like, yeah, she wasn't just calling out heaven in the MCU. There was a societal call out there that was, was kind of nice. And, and again, very she Hulk. And well, and even yeah. the fact too, that it's like that we're Hulks. That's what we do. You know, we <laughs> smash. <laughs> and then, you know, and, you know, I, I, and, and, then, and then throwing in the Mac, Matt Murdock part of that, because again, that was part of it, because I remember right. watching the fanboys <laughs> where it's people, I'm just hanging out, you know, I'm just hanging around waiting for Daredevil. When is Daredevil showing up? Daredevil, Daredevil, Daredevil. oh, Daredevil got late. And you're like, oh, well, suddenly this is, not okay. don't you realize like this, this is, this is not so, so she's a slut, but. Or even the worst. Playboy. <laughs> But what? And and you're like, you don't realize. And and so the fact that, you know, that she put the, you know, and sometimes I yeah. smash my, Matt Murdock out there, like you don't realize like, yeah. She right. Wasn't, That's a poke the, back. She at, wasn't on the receiving yeah. end of this. She was an active yeah. agent. And if anything, this is about she got Matt Murdock. Or even worse when people, I have a few people out there saying like, oh man, what a corruption to Matt Murdock. He's a good Catholic boy. And it's like, well, hold on. Being Catholic <laughs> is a big part of Daredevil's backstory. But yeah, like, he's not again, a good Catholic you boy. paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Well, well, hey, um, tell everybody what's going on at, uh, at speak dash up.co if i said your website right Ooh, well there's there's some overhauls going on as you know in my previous life i used to be um, a university educator so i am doing some wonderful work with um, two different groups of student interns so i am hoping by mid-december to have uh the website relaunched and have some of the <laughs> The glitches that were happening in the back end of the membership site all sorted out. So, I, it sure is a good looking website, though. What's that? I mean, as far as like every time I've looked at it, you're like, I, do you still have the landing page with the Iron Man chest light thing? I don't know if you still oh, have yeah, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, the arc but, reactor. Well, but yeah, the arc reactor. That was the word I love I was the arc for. reactor, but it was on every page and it was slowing it down. So I've got some wonderful oh, UI okay. UX um, students doing that. And then there are, and they are, um, well, in Ontario and Kenya, one of the students is actually, so this is all remote. Um, so booking those meetings is always fun. <laughs> um, yes. And then I've had uh, some of those episodes with doing people um, in different marketing. parts of the world. So that's as, as an yeah. educator, the idea of being able to give them, uh, let them do some practicum work and, and they're excited about it. So doing that. And like I said, speaking at the tech conference. So uh, yeah, there's always stuff going on again there'll be the the relaunch and the rebrand uh well not a full rebrand but more of the relaunch of the membership website and hopefully some more um new things to announce on the horizon and you and i need to get our act together on that book um <laughs> <laughs> that's right yes more on that later there's a there we're, we're, we're putting well, a yeah, for, we put uh, out a little yeah exactly a little little hidden thing yeah we're we're, we're, we're working on something so we're working yep. on something and, as well, well and so. i guess the other thing too and this is the throwback to the the, the what, what we were just talking about <laughs> i love the fact and and this is why hulks are some of my favorite was that that opening episode yes bruce may have been trying to mansplain hulking but um he did make one more part of my program canon when he sat down with dialectical behavior therapy because I'm that like, was I've amazing hulk for dbt right when from When's the last time your DBT referenced in any media that's just fictional media? Yeah, that was fantastic. So, so yeah. developing that, and I, I think I'm going to clearly like be plugging that a little bit more because 
it, it just seems that, you know, every other thing, um, Bruce says a thing that is like, oh, and that part of my program is now canon. Oh, and that part of my program. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I love me, my hulks. Um, <laughs> Well, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna plug as we're on our way out. I want to plug two places you can go for non toxic fandom, mm -hmm. um, and on Facebook you can find there's a group I've plugged before on here called Paprika, and I may have mentioned this before as well, but it's the Great Geek Refuge, and uh, both of both of these have attending podcasts. The Paprika reviews is a lot of movie reviews and some good movie shows. The Great Geek Refuge has a uh, uh, a few different podcasts that you can find under that name. And they even have uh, one of the things they have is their theme song talks about being anti gatekeeping and no toxicity. So they even have right up front, they hit you. <laughs> and Mike Lunsford is one of the admins there has put it out there that he's like, if I catch you using M she you or mm. the word, you know, if I catch you using that non ironically on the page, you're just gone. That's a one offense thing. You are gone. Yeah. Yeah. There's so, no such strikes you're out. This is yeah. don't let the door hit your butt. Right, exactly. This is one strike. And, and that's more know. about a don't dirty my door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's, uh, there's a couple of places that people want to look for a place that is non-toxic and also very supportive, very kind and nice people that I find. Yeah. And and the interesting thing, you can really see how a uh, debate can be fun if it's with people who are caring and oh. also non-toxic. So, you know, people will debate all day long on there, but it, you know, oh, yeah. once again, you, you get the band hammer fall down on you if you, if you're toxic or negative. Uh, that's in that awesome. Way, Thank so. you for resharing that. Cause that's, I got to catch up on that. Yeah. Yeah. I'll send you, I should invite, I should send you invites. I'm in both groups. So, although cool. uh, they're for, you know, anyone can join them, but so there's that. And then, uh, yeah, I'll just say as far as uh, people getting, uh, we're talking about websites, you can always hop on over to uh, patreon.com slash broken brain. If you'd like to get involved with the program, there's more and more bonus things in the works that are coming uh, got some, uh, yeah, you know, doing some things that have to do with media and then also doing some article reviews and reviews of mental health resources out there about to drop a little review about 988, which is the new, um, a new suicide hotline in the United States. I don't know if that's in Canada, but at least in the U S that's something that's becoming, you can hit three numbers and be directed to, instead of having to write down or look up the national suicide hotline, which if you're super suicidal, not always and depressed, not always motivated to look up a hotline where someone's going to, you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like things. And, and again, and that's also in it, one of those things that it makes life easy. But again, having been in government, the infrastructure and the idea of how do you consistently deliver something and what is that doing to your own system? So it's the it, it's a challenge for the system on the number of fronts. But if it's going to save lives, that's what we need to do. And that's where we need to have those resources, because as much as we can keep doing other things, you still have to have it there. Absolutely. Because there's all, but again, we need to be doing more, more preemptive, more educational, more, more things where it's not about us and them in terms of those of us with diagnoses. It's not a, you know, the mental health programs. And that's again, what I deliver, uh, you know, when you bring them into the workplace, it, it, it's not about do these things to keep yourself from becoming someone with, you know, a mental health issue. It's like, we all have mental health. We all, you know, and some of us, again, using the superpower reference, some days you never know if you're going to be in the car accident, <laughs> get the, uh, you know, inadvertent blood transfusion and be the superhero the next day. So we're all a day yeah. away from it. So better to have um, a positive mindset and understanding of those who already live with those powers because you net makes you a better ally and you never know if one day you're going to help out. Excellent. I'm going to, um, you know what, I'm going to call it there. I think that's actually a good awesome. ending line. I don't need to be the one to lead us out. So I'll just, the little music will swell up there at the end <laughs> <laughs> on Sharon's point, which I think is cool. Let me hit